Hello, welcome to the basic Pirates of the Burning Sea economy guide. If you have any inkling of what to do with economy, you probably shouldn't be watching this video. This is basically for complete new starters that want to get their teeth into economy. Okay, so what you want to do is select the Buccaneer class. Okay, if you're going to go Pirates, Pirates, you're going to have Cutthroat or Buccaneer. Go Buccaneer, it'll make your life a lot easier. If you're going to national, nationals have free traders. You don't have to do this, but it's um, it's insanely hard mode if you decide to do it on another character, and I'll explain why. These here are the, as, as you can see, I'm level 50 buccaneer here, but these are the skills you get which help you towards the economy as a buccaneer. All right, home network. All right, which allows you to browse all auction listings from wherever you are in the world. So that means you could be on the western side of the world here, go to the shop, and browse something that's all the way over here for sale. Now, if you don't have that skill, you can't do this. And that's right at the end of the smuggling tree. All right. Also, you're going to have smuggled cargo, all right, which is, if you get attacked in PvP, you can surrender. If they spare your life and accept the surrender, then you're going to, you know, not lose all your loot. All right. And basically, with these skills, you've also got passive skills as well, which are Darkest Night, which allows you to be more stealthy. That's the... Basically, if people can see you on the open sea, it's the distance they can see you, so it allows you to sneak in and sneak out of ports, etc. Um, and there's a lot of escape skills as well, like Whistle Down the Wind. All right, A lot of panic skills, which allow you to you know, either run or chase somebody down and catch them. All right, so Buccaneer is definitely the way to go. All right, I'm not saying you have to do that, um, but it, it's a lot easier if you choose a Buccaneer or a free trader. And plus you have access to specific trade ships as well, all right, which allow you to transport a lot of goods over um, over long distances. That makes sense. Save, save doing multiple trips. Right, and as you can see, if you press G, um, this is the Tortuga free warehouse. You get it your nation capital if you're a pirate. Um, obviously, nationals have got the main you know, capital towns. And um, also at Marsh Harbour, your starting town, when you've unlocked the quest, the level, you know, five quest for economy, then um, you, you get the access to those free warehouses and you can build your own. So I press the G key to get this up. If you've seen my basic guide, um, a lot of this is covered in the basic guide. I'm just refreshing your minds on it. All right, but as you can see here, I've got access to all the areas that I own. And I'm actually an ammo crafter. As you can see, this is Guanica, and um, I've got um, I've got a large copper mine there, all right, and it tells me how much labour I've got. We'll go into this later. It also tells me how long I've got left, so I've got like one hour till this building becomes shuttered. So I need to get supplies for that to keep it running, all right. But if you look at look at my economy, all right, we've got cat island, we've got all these factories here as well, on cat, all right. Um, that's the free place at Marsh Harbour. But yeah, eventually that's what it's going going to look like. So. To give you an idea of what I do, um, this is your starting area as a pirate, um, and I basically go down in a circle down here, mine my resources down here, dump it off, come here, grab stuff for gunpowder, come back, dump it off in a central location, and make ammunition um, for for my faction. All right, so that's what I do. All right, there's plenty of things you can do like shipbuilder, etc., etc., or building small parts for other people. All right. So swiftly teleporting from my buccaneer back to my new cutthroat, I can explain to you um, what's going on now for the economy. So basically, if you remember, following the previous starter guide, hopefully, uh, you will know that anything with a book uh, is basically a tutorial mission. All right, and you will get this quest, I believe, from this chap. As soon as you step off the dock, you know, from doing your tutorial missions. All right, and if you remember how to, how I taught you how to locate things, Right, you can either use the map or you can use the yard distance which you can see counting down and you're going to go here right. this is how you start the economy because right, at the moment if you press G you've got no access to a warehouse so if you want the access to the warehouse you've got to see this lady here alright right, so she sends you the back room here
Vale. Back out again. Go see Ebenezer Diggum. Back on the docks. Start production catalog. So remember what I said about the easiest way to find where you're going. All right. Remember, you've got to bring up the local. So you can press M. Cat Island is C. So in alphabetic order, you're going to find it. So where is it? It's popping up here. Press L. Cat Island. See how I did that? Press L. You click on it on the pirate flag. Bam, there you go, 141 miles. See you there. Okay, so we've landed at Cat Island. <clears throat> it seems to be in order. Slight digress. Um, defeat the ship on the way here, level 5 ship, and they drop this. Sail outfitting. Alright, so all the books you come across you want to learn. Alright. They basically give you different recipes. So what you can do is you can branch into making. Um, there's the upgrades for ships. They'll appear here. Let's see how I did that. It's down here. Where your skills are, recipes. Alright, so now, I'll tell you what you need. So you need textile mill for sales. You need a forge for cannon upgrades, etc. But like I said, you can find all this stuff on the open world, alright, by defeating enemies. Learn the recipes, and then you can build that specific um, factory. And you can start pumping out upgrades for ships. All right? They come in different sizes, all right? but you can sell those to players on the auction houses. So this is the shop you need to go to. In here. All right, and this is the shop you need to start, uh, start the economy mission with. Um, what they were saying earlier and what we skipped is literally on the auction house you've got buy orders. There you go. So that's what the computer's after or that's what people are after. As we noticed you can sell different things. All right. I can't see all of it because remember I'm not a buccaneer. Uh, with my level 50 character I can see sheets and sheets and sheets of buy orders. All right. And you've got the auctions. This is the other stuff. And this is just going to show the locality in, in, in small areas. It's not going to show the whole world because again it's not unlocked because I'm not the buccaneer with the skill if that makes sense. All right. So you're a little bit gimped at the start until you get that skill. All right, but this is what you can buy, and you can change the port, you know, Cat Island or in Cat. So what they're selling in Cat, here you go. Uh, you can change the prices as well, that's how much you have to pay. All right, and if I was to buy something, firewood, all right, make an offer. So five days ago it sold for 300, so it's going to be 300 per unit. Submit offer, and bam, that'll go straight into your pocket. Or if you've got a warehouse where it says destination, you can click warehouse. If you've got a warehouse in this port, the stuff goes directly into your uh, warehouse and not your ship inventory, if that makes sense. And if you've bought something by accident from another port, like, I don't know, let's, let's say, for instance, I can see Tortuga here, and then I thought it was Cat Island. If you click this pickup tab here, it'll tell you what port you've just bought it at and how long till it expires. It, it does give you quite a long time to go and pick it up. And equally, if you sold something in a different port, this is where it's going to show up. All right. If you sold something while you were, um, uh, you know, offline, it'll appear down here in the text box telling you what you sold, how many units of it. All right. All right. So this is very specific. This quest is all right. If you don't click something in the right order, it, it won't work. All right. Okay. So you're going to learn that. I'm ready to speak to him, then you're going to go into this back room here. Remember, it's, it's a bit of a clicky boxy exercise. You don't really have to read everything if you don't want to. You can follow this guide if that makes sense. All right. I'm just going to explain to you how it all works. Believe me, it's mind boggling. Okay, so we're going to build a warehouse. See, pointer down here. Click on that. 
build warehouse. Yes. Now what happens with these warehouses, you can build them in any friendly port. Um, and remember, you've got two free ones in Tortuga and Marsh Harbour. All right. But you want to choose carefully where you're going to put that warehouse. All right. And you're going to need one where your manufacturing um, buildings are. So, for instance, if I was going to go into the gunpowder trade, I would want to look on this list here by hovering over the town. And there's guano. Right at the bottom above limestone is guano. All right, so that's used in saltpeter. And saltpeter and sulfur from up here all right, get put in a powder mill. They get, they get crushed first in a stamp. And then they get put in a powder mill and turned into gunpowder. All right, but you're going to need a warehouse in this port, a warehouse in this port. And then if you're centralising the stuff like I did on my character at Cat, then you're going to need a warehouse there as well. But it gives you one because of the quest, right? So bearing in mind for that, you're going to need one, two, three warehouses. And each time you get a warehouse, the cost goes up of said warehouse. All right. These are the economy slots here where it says new. All right. And to get more, you've got to go into Treasure Isle. So we're using the pay, um, the, the pay model at the moment. So it's free to play at the moment. All right. But... You can buy things through the treasure shop. Uh, the old model they used to use, and if they go back into legacy like they say they were, uh, it was a monthly subscription, uh, like other MMOs, uh, and you would have full access to 10 economy slots. So so if you want to get deep into economy in reality, you will need to come here. Alright, so back on with the quest. Speak to the chat. Click the button. Build the recipe he gave you. Don't worry about that yet. Then to close all these windows down. And like I said, you've got to follow exactly what he says. Otherwise it can get a bit confused. Okay, let's get a hunt game now. It's here. Hunt game. Create it. Close all the windows down again. There you go. All objectives complete. Back out. Okay, so you've gone back out of the shop, speak to him again. Okay, so what you have to do for this one is when he gives you this reward, everybody pick Draftman's Office, please. All right, the Draftman's Office is a structure which allows you to build the majority of buildings in the game. Right, I'll give you the deed. It's like an architect's office, right? So all those weird things like a forge or a stamp mill, this is how you get them. You, know, you use the draftman's office, all right? It's really simple. You just need to load paper into it when you built it. Basically, there's a few um, buildings as well you can't get unless you're on the cash shop. And all it does is it just makes your life a little bit easier, all right? So for instance, if you're making ammo, you kind of have to mine the ore, crush the ore in a separate building, and then do the powder in a separate building, and then forge the ammunition with all those components, whereas the mining company here eliminates the need for multiple buildings, if that makes sense. Alright, so you can still do, without paying or reaching for your wallet, you can still do everything that the people that pay can, it just takes more of your time, if that makes sense. It's very doable. Yeah, it's really important you follow things in the chronological order because I made a little bit of a mistake then and I had to wait for the timer. See, so stored labour, you can see it counting up. It went from 40 to 41 there. I made five by clicking on maximum by accident. Don't do that because right, then you'll have to wait to complete the quest. Uh, basically, this counts up. So even when you're AFK or you're, um, you're asleep or whatever in real life, this labour will count up and then it will cap out You know, a couple of days, basically. Um, this is the upkeep. 
and this is basically if you click on here it's this factory is going to be open for 13 days and you've got to provide it with here these lodge provisions and some money within that time limit to stop it being shuttered if it's shuttered it doesn't get demolished it just means it's not open it's not producing stored labor and it's not producing any goods when you want it to all right so you can still have the property there and, and you can even shutter it yourself if that makes sense just shut it down without deleting it all right but basically these lodge provisions here they can be made by a provisioner so that's another trade somebody can basically make um, a, like a provisions factory that kind of like um, uh, you, you put food parcels in there and whatnot and you combine it all to make a package um, and also helpfully uh, when you unlock the ability to see all the auction houses normally if you go down to here this um, town Arangestad uh, that's the neutral Dutch faction and it's populated with all the things you need for the economy so it's got all the provisions down there and it's got all the specialist key workers like a, a miner or a blacksmith or you know people like that because you need one off to open up one of these factories if that makes sense or a mine all right so you need to make the little trip down to this neutral faction place here uh, around just had and uh, pick up the resources you need to um, keep these factories going they are really really heavy so they'll fill up the whole inventory of a ship with one of these items this is why you really need to lean towards a free trade or a buccaneer and have a specific trade built ship if that made sense because um, it just makes your life a lot a lot a lot easier i didn't discuss it before on my previous guide but here is the current you'll see giant arrows in the sea that you can click on on the little mini map here and even if the wind's blowing in your face it will just accelerate your ship a little bit and help you move around the map and like i said my economy kind of goes like this in a figure of eight but i'm using the currents to traverse sometimes the currents will go through a pvp area like here so you just got to pay attention maybe go around if you don't want to engage in pvp but use a little bit of common sense in that So moving swiftly on, hunt game. Skin gain our animals. Sorry, open it up again. <laughs> Back into the shop again. This chat. Remember, Draftman's office. Alright, now, when you press G, you've now got a warehouse in Cat Island. Alright. Remember, you, later on, you get a free one to Ortega, Marsh Harbour. And what you're going to do now with these, demolish. Slots are open there. Here. So you can make three there. Right, and if you want more, you've got to go into the treasure aisle and not with the uh, economy pack. Quiet. Nothing to report. Okay, let's show you something how to move stuff really easily. So you press I for your inventory, uh, which is ship inventory. G will be your warehouse. So it'll say economy at the start of it. Right? And the easy way to transfer stuff is click on and the icon up there. Obviously not the ammunition, and not the consumables, right? But it's going to be loot items, manufactured goods, granite. All right, choose destination, warehouse. Bam, there you go. So you've just emptied your ship into your warehouse, and you can do it going back the other way as well. So let's have a little bit of a talk about the Draftman's office, for instance. This gives you access to every single deed in the game, apart from the three or four that's on the... Um, cash shop all right but you only need to make your life a little bit easier all right and again it's only cost of a couple of dollars so nothing bank breaking there but you see all these items here frame timber oak planks building stone furniture architect steel provisions to get all that to construct that building you need to go to the nation capital as i said tortuga tortuga is going to have everything you need there apart from um an architect or something similar 
which again you need to go to Orange Stead uh, here to get your architect. And then I would suggest building it in somewhere central if you're a pirate like Cat Island right here. Alright, but that'll get you started and that'll allow you to build what you want in game. Oh, it's back on the bottom here now. This is the drafting's office. Just wanted to show you the kind of patterns you get in here. Mm -hmm. Bakeries, furnaces, plantations. See all this? This is why it's important to get that deed so you can build this. Right. Now, some of my uh, premises have uh, shuttered themselves. All right. I've already got shop provisions that I've bought from Rangerstead at this port in my warehouse. I preempted this happening. Pay it, creep, bam, it's back open again, right? Back in business. All right. Now, if we're to flick back through this again, my mines are shuttered and they haven't got the right things that they need, right? So, mine provisions. So, what we're going to be going to do now is I will show you how the Buccaneer works for finding things in the world. We go to said auctioneer. Okay, in the auction house, and right. type in mine prof search. You've got a deal. Okay, and these are the areas where the mine provisions Mate. are. Now, if you weren't well, buccaneer, you, you wouldn't see that. Really? You'd just see the local ah, Bahamas, right? But I can see dark. everywhere. So Tortuga, that's our main town. That's where we need to go to go and get those mine provisions to keep my mines open. All right. Um, what I've done as well is I am well, now on you. my um, my uh, economy ship, which is called. Assaulting flute, all right. And if you've noticed with this sh ship, where it, it says capacities down here, it's 2,000, all right. So your warships have got capacities of like 100. And Everything seems to be in your economy ships on um, much larger capacity. A really good ship early on for the economy is a Zebec because you can sail pretty much against the wind quite quickly and get everywhere. Quite most ships are already against the wind, and they're cheapest ships, all right. And their capacity is 900, so that's pretty good for a starter. You can see with mine here, it's got, I've got dark wrap gear, all right, and I've got um, stealth cells as well, all right. So people can see me uh, from 41 miles away. That's it. And then you've got the buccaneer uh, passive skills, um, dark as night, which help you hide. You can pretty much become fairly invisible to players if you really wanted to. Um, hope that helps. Just a final note, what the uh, what they've put into the game now is you can see these here, trade goods, recipe, fill kick, or whatever, the gunpowder, salt beater, um, but every manufacturing has got these in now. And what this is, is some, it's in the game at the moment, but I'm told it's not working correctly right now, but it's probably going to be fixed soon, uh, is this is your ability to sell to the uh, NPCs in the auction house, right, so you would put these on. Uh, sell them and then the computer if a player doesn't buy them will buy them off you if that makes sense it's a way to keep the economy rolling um, if there's not enough people buying and selling and it's a bloody good idea to be honest so if you see trade goods that's what that's for i hope this has been helpful for you just to get you started don't ever think doing economy is a chore um, i've managed to basically set sail just be safe you're not selling to pvp owners of course i got a pull-up bar next to me i, I do fitness in between selling I've also studied for a qualification at the same time whilst sailing. And I was listening to the sound of my ship crashing into land. Uh, um, you know, so it, it kind of is quite fun really because it means you can do work or study or you know, do some fitness and um, you know, keep the wife happy, whatever, like that, and the game at the same time. You can walk away from the keyboard, you know, come back five, ten minutes later. So you don't ever think it's a chore or being stuck in the wind. Uh, it's a negative thing, it's actually a bonus sometimes. You can get so much other stuff done at the same time as gaming. So all in all, to be honest, economy is a win-win. Um, like I said, this is a very, very, very basic guide for you, and I hope it made sense, and I hope it got you from starter to, you know, getting your first few buildings up and running and giving it a go. Um, look, for, look for more guides that I'm going to slap up later on. You know, should have already seen my uh, basic gameplay guide. Um, if not, give it a watch. Of course, got a building guide, and uh, we'll do some of the best guides later on, etc. So. Uh, Captain Bill Long, aka Roberts, or slightly mad, we're logging off. See you later, happy sailing troops.